I think I rushed the process a bit much. Well, I love it. I love my floor. How did that happen? Welcome back to the van build. Today has been quite the day. Uh, the reason that I say that is because I have been going back and forth with the types of flooring that I want to do for my van and I have finally officially made the decision which means it's officially happening today. So in this video you will see me lay my floor. I'm using peel and stick vinyl sheets. I will be doing the little edging of that as well for the back of my garage as well as the entrance and I'm going to be making changes to my bed frame enough chatting I'm really excited to lay my floor because it's actually gonna look like the start of a home maybe a little bit first thing that I'm gonna do um, I'm actually gonna patch up my floor so there are some deep cracks in my plywood as well as the holes from me screwing my half inch plywood to my two by twos. I actually originally bought a concrete patcher because I've seen people use that on their subfloors before laying like their vinyl sheet flooring or what I'm gonna be laying. And I almost had opened the bag and mixed it and it just didn't feel right. Obviously concrete is really hard and it's not flexible but my van flexes. So I can just imagine that concrete particles are going to flake up or they're going to loosen from my plywood. I am going to patch some places of my plywood with Alex Fast Dry. Reasons why I got this. Crack resistant, multi-surface use, it's also waterproof, and you can paint over it, which means that stuff will adhere to it. So that's what I'm gonna start with first, and then I'm gonna lay my floor. Okay. Super excited. I think that's all I need to tell you right now. You will see the rest. Do you see the sweat droplets? I'm legitimately mixing sweat into this patching material. There were a lot of really deep grooves in this one and not many in this one. While this dries, I'm going to paint my metal trim piece. Maybe I'll cut it first, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Oh, God. I just cut the metal trim, and I am now going to spray it with matte black, because it's gonna look cool. All right, back in here, I am now taking this and scraping all of the excess patching material off the top of the wood. So I'm gonna try to finish this up and then I gotta go work out. So that'll probably be it for the day. And then I'll finish up my flooring and my trim tomorrow, like for good. See, I told you that was gonna happen. Okay, today is the day where my flooring goes in. But remember yesterday when I was painting my, <clears throat> my metal trim well i think i rushed the process a bit much so i'm gonna be like stepping on this trim and in the garage area sliding stuff off of it i went and got an aluminum primer specifically for like bare aluminum and then i went and got a high performance enamel this says that it's used for industrial applications i just spent some time really sanding so it was black yesterday as you saw but i spent some time sanding paint off and really scuffing up the metal so that the primer can really get in there and hopefully this round is a little bit more um, robust. I don't know why I'm so nervous to lay my floor but I'm legit doing it right now. This is what I'm using. It's a peel and stick, very flexible, very lightweight. The color that I chose is I think walnut Java Ember. Could have said them in the wrong order. People will often use tongue and groove or vinyl sheet flooring. And I decided to go with this for a few different reasons. First reason is I didn't have to purchase any expensive adhesive. The back apparently is extremely sticky. This is a popular option to do for RVs. Some people will use this for like backsplashes, but also like I mentioned, it's light and I saved money, which is always a plus. 
Originally, I was going to use an additional adhesive. Um, I picked up some of the 3M contact adhesive, and after speaking with some flooring people, they said you really don't have to. This stuff is extremely sticky. They said it's easy to lay down, it's easy to get really close and snug with each other. I am using a little um, 90 degree edge to make sure that this is in fact going to butt up perfectly to my walls. I want it to be perfectly straight. That brings up another reason why this is easy to install. This can be cut with just a normal utility knife. I'm a little nervous. Shall we? We need more than for us to make it through the night Stormy weather, weary eyes Hope to make it through the night Before this night is over I will guide you home, home. I love it. I love my floor. The aluminum transitions are ready. So let's make this look even better. I've been told that time will heal all our wounds and our sorrows too. No more clouds. No tiny crossroads. I will explain. For the, the very back part of my garage, it actually hangs over where my subfloor ends. So my screws, <clears throat> I started screwing one in and then I realized hmm, it's going to be poking out the bottom <laughs> and I don't want that. So I ended up going back to Home Depot. Surprise. Wait, where are they? They're not black. They're a dark gray and I'm a little upset about it. Ooh, they're like really not black actually at all. They're still gonna look fine though, but they're just a little smaller. Larger head too, so I don't really know. It, I'm sure it'll still fit flush. Alright, this last trim is done. It doesn't look as nice as the other stuff because of the screws, but I still think it looks pretty sharp. All right, now I'm gonna move on to my bed frame. Prior to this video, if you've been watching and keeping track with the build, you know that I already made a bed frame that consisted of two two by tens, and I think I'd used like five two by fours. The two by tens were a little bit annoying to work around, and I wasn't 100% sure that the bolts that I used weren't going to come loose from the backside. So I headed to Ikea, and I grabbed some bed slats. I will be able to actually have a bed for my trip this weekend. You said let's jump on a bus and take a ride downtown. Well, I don't know about that. Can you help me okay. first to get So these the are the bed slats that I'm talking about. Well, They're Leroy. We have the whole day now just to ourselves so we can clean the house or clear out some shelves. You said whichever you feel like doing first, I said, well, you want to see my tentative plan? Cause it's my lazy Look at this. I'm going to make sure that this indeed is the right size for a full bed. My plan is to stagger these a little bit. Will it be strong enough? I think so. All right, a full is 53, 53 by 75. Oh, Jesus, this is not 53. Basically how I have it set up right now, I'm losing three inches. How did that happen? <clears throat> what to do, I don't know. Isn't it crazy that all I wanna do is just live in the van and like have it 
you know, semi comfortable and, and I'm getting caught up by three inches, three inches of a bed that I don't even need, but Aquila might need it. You know what I'm saying? If I let my slats go over a tiny bit here, it gets me pretty close to 53 inches, which means that I wouldn't have to cut my mattress. Wow, you can't see my face at all. Which means I wouldn't have to cut my mattress down at all. Before I attach any slats, I am gonna take these little L brackets. I'm just gonna put them here. Nope. I need to go to Home Depot. Get smaller screws. Oh my God, I'm so sick of this. I got the screws. In. So I'm literally cracking every single one of them. Well, I've only put two in. Crack, crack. I've been trying a bunch of different sizes. I'm going with just a just a one quarter inch screw. It's a little bit thicker than I would want, but as long as I go slow, it doesn't crack. Like so many times before, I never felt as lonely. But I'm trying not to show. I staggered them in the middle to fit what my design is. Also, I forgot to mention before, a big reason that I wanted to go with the slats is because of airflow. If you're sitting on something without um, some sort of extra mat or whatever that allows you airflow, there's a good chance you're gonna get mold under your mattress. And with this, lots of airflow and it'll be comfortable. These are Leroy slats. I got them from Ikea. I will link them below. Tomorrow, I'll be able to put my bed on it and see how it feels. Also, I really, really like that I ended up putting the windows so high because I think I got a six inch mattress and I'm grateful that I put the windows where they are. Cool, Aquila. Oh. oh, it'll be a lot better with the mattress on it. It's awesome. Feels like I'm not gonna fall. just a final look for the day. We're getting somewhere. Hello. It has been four days. We're on five days since I installed my floor and my new bed frame. Do you notice something different? I wanted to wait a little bit and share with you some of the things that I noticed with my floor in my bed because of course everything looks really good right after it's installed and rarely do you hear about how it worked out over the long term and granted this isn't super long term but I think a few days a lot has kind of surfaced with what I would have done differently I'm gonna start with my bed because that's the easiest one I love my bed I absolutely love my bed if I were to build out a van again or do one in the future I will do it the exact same way I love the bed slats and I love the bed that I ordered. Um, I went with a six inch cool gel. I will link it below. I'm super active. I lift weights. I hike a lot. I'm out doing things and I feel great when I wake up. It's probably one of the most comfortable mattresses I've ever had and it's only six inches. Also, it is a full size mattress and I didn't have to change anything. Wouldn't change a thing there. On the other hand, with my floor, here's what I want to share. Heat makes a huge difference. What I noticed is that when it gets really hot, the adhesive doesn't work as well. All I do to fix that is press, on, press it down or walk on it or just get it out of the sun and then it's totally fine and it'll go back to normal. I am keeping the contact adhesive, the 3M contact adhesive, just in case that continues to happen and the adhesive wears out a little bit, I can just spray some of that underneath these individual sheets and lay it back down. If the heat isn't shining directly on it, it's, it, it's beautiful. The adhesive has worked wonderfully. The second thing that I've noticed though is with the change in temperatures, I think that the material does expand and contract. So what I've noticed are some very small cracks 
between the sheets that weren't there before especially back in my like garage area which is just my like storage with the extreme heat and maybe the extreme cold i don't know because i'm gonna stay away from that you might get some separation based on how your material reacts to the different temperatures i loved the installation of my floor it was very straightforward it took a few hours and I really like that it's super flexible, light, and cheap. And I think that I would rather do vinyl sheet flooring. The sheet flooring might react to heat in a similar fashion and might bubble up. At least then you don't have to worry about cracks happening in your floor. Overall, I'm just so happy with my experience in Togo so far. Yeah, it's really starting to feel like home. I'm hoping that some of this information after living in Togo for a week with the new installations is really helpful and that you can make a solid decision based on your needs, your wants, where you're going to travel, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and watching my videos. Also make sure that you are checking the comment section. There are people that will leave advice and it's super, super helpful. If you are not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Button? I just said blend. If you are not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and if all goes well, next week you will see my solar setup. I am really excited for that. Before I say goodbye, I'm gonna show you my campsite. Life is in a stream.